While we frequently hear about male-dominated gangs, it's high time we shine a spotlight on the fierce and formidable women who've charted their own course in the realm of organized crime. In this video, I present to you some of the most dangerous female gangs, from the 40 Elephants to the Black Widows. Any encounter with these women is bound to leave you drained. So, without further ado, let's delve into the world of the most dangerous female gangs. 40 Elephants. In the late 19th century, nefarious gangs ruled the streets of London, but one stood out above the rest, the 40 Elephants, London's all-female organization. In the seedy underbelly of London's criminal underworld, there existed a gang that struck fear into the hearts of both law enforcement and their male counterparts. They were known as the 40 Elephants, an all-female gang that operated from the late 18th century to the 1950s. Led by powerful women like Mary Polycar and Alice Diamond, they were a force to be reckoned with. The 40 Elephants specialized in shoplifting, targeting quality stores in the prestigious West End of London. Their raids were meticulously planned and executed executed with precision. They were known for their audacious heists, often striking during the bustling hours of the day when the stores were filled with unsuspecting shoppers. What made the 40 Elephants truly unique was their ability to masquerade as housemaids for wealthy families. They would infiltrate these households, gaining the trust of their employers before ransacking their homes of valuable possessions. This tactic allowed them to expand their operations beyond the confines of the West End, reaching other major shopping centers across the country. The gang had its own set of rules and demanded unwavering loyalty from its members. They were a tightly knit group, bound by a code of silence and a fierce sense of camaraderie. The 40 Elephants were admired by their male counterparts in the Elephant Gang for their organization and expertise. They were often said to be able to meet equal numbers of men in battle, a testament to their strength and resilience. To aid in their criminal activities, the gang members wore women's clothing modified to include hidden pockets. These hidden compartments allowed them to conceal their loot, making it difficult for law enforcement to catch them in the act. They stole goods worth thousands of pounds, earning enough money to support their male spouses and live lavish lifestyles. The 40 Elephants were not confined to London alone. As their reputation grew, they expanded their activities to other British towns, targeting rural areas and seaside towns. To modernize their operations, the gang invested in fast cars and utilized trains to transport their loot. They were always one step ahead, adapting to the changing times and utilizing new methods to carry out their criminal activities. In addition to shoplifting, they developed sidelines such as looting houses and blackmail mailing individuals. Notable members of the 40 Elephants included Mary Polycar and Alice Diamond. Mary Polycar was a formidable leader, known for her strategic thinking and ability to command respect. Alice Diamond, on the other hand, was a towering figure with a clever mind. Under her leadership, the gang's operations expanded across the country, solidifying their status as the most dangerous female gang of their time. While various gang members were arrested and convicted at times, their prison sentences tended to be short. This allowed them to quickly return to the gang upon release, continuing their reign of terror. The 40 Elephants were a force to be reckoned with, and their criminal activities lasted for decades. The gang distributed their loot to a network of fences, street market traders, and pawnbrokers. Some of the fences associated with the gang were arrested, but due to lack of evidence or witness testimony, they could not be convicted. This network allowed the gang to profit from their criminal activities and maintain their stronghold in the criminal underworld. Las Flacas. Las Flacas, also known as the Skinny Ones, is a notorious female gang that has struck fear into the hearts of many. Led by the infamous Jocelyn Alejandra Nino, or La Flaca, this Mexican gang has gained a reputation for its ruthless criminal activities and involvement in the drug trade. Las Flacas first emerged on the scene as a subgroup within the Gulf Cartel, one of the most powerful drug cartels in Mexico. With their slim physiques and ability to blend in, they quickly became valuable assets for the cartel. Women like La Flaca were often recruited for their appearance, which helped them evade detection and carry out their criminal activities with ease. One of the primary criminal activities that Las Flacas engaged in was drug trafficking. They played a crucial role in the transportation and distribution of narcotics, ensuring that the cartel's drugs reached their intended destinations. Their involvement in the drug trade allowed them to amass wealth and power, further solidifying their position within the criminal underworld. But drug trafficking was not the only criminal activity that Las Flacas was involved in. They were also known for their involvement in extortion, kidnapping, and acts of violence. Their ruthless tactics and willingness to resort to extreme measures made them a force to be reckoned with. Anyone who crossed paths with Las Flacas knew that they 
they were dealing with a dangerous and deadly gang. One of the most shocking aspects of Las Flacas's criminal activities was their involvement in assassinations. La Flaca herself was a suspected assassin associated with the Gulf Cartel. Her skills and willingness to take lives made her a feared figure within the criminal underworld. The gang would carry out targeted killings, eliminating anyone who posed a threat to their operations or crossed their path. The impact of Las Flacas's criminal activities on the communities they operated in cannot be understated. Their presence instilled fear and terror, leaving innocent civilians trapped in a cycle of violence. The gang's involvement in the drug trade led to an increase in addiction and drug-related crimes, further destabilizing the already fragile communities. The Las Flacas are a formidable and dangerous female gang that has left a trail of violence and terror in their wake. Their involvement in drug trafficking, assassinations, and other criminal activities has had a devastating impact on the communities they operate in. The authorities continue to fight against them, but the battle is far from over. The story of Las Flacas serves as a chilling reminder of the dark side of the criminal underworld and the lengths some are willing to go to achieve power and control. Black Widow Gang Also known as the Black Widows of Colombia, this notorious criminal network operated during the late 2000s and early 2010s, leaving a trail of terror in their wake. Led by the cunning Sandra Giraldo and Emerson Yulima Natali Rojas, this group of Colombian serial killers was charged with the murders of three men in Antioquia. But their reign of terror extended far beyond these cases, as they were believed to be responsible for countless other crimes. What makes this gang truly unique is its composition, mainly consisting of women. Each member played a specific role within the gang, from establishing relationships with unsuspecting men to carrying out their gruesome murders. But their criminal activities didn't stop there. They also managed life insurance collections, amassing a fortune ranging from 100 to 800 million pesos. The origins of the Black Widow Gang can be traced back to the late 2000s in Colombia, a country known for its tumultuous history and criminal underworld. It was during this time that Sandra Giraldo and Emerson Yuluma Natali Rojas, two cunning and ruthless women, joined forces to form a criminal network like no other. Sandra and Emerson were no strangers to the dark side of life. Both had grown up in poverty-stricken neighborhoods, surrounded by violence and desperation. They had witnessed firsthand the struggles faced by women in a male-dominated society, and they were determined to change their fate. Their paths crossed one fateful night at a local bar, where they discovered a shared ambition and a hunger for power. They realized that by joining forces, they could create a criminal empire that would strike fear into the hearts of their enemies and bring them the wealth and influence they craved. With their minds set on their nefarious goals, Sandra and Emerson began recruiting like-minded women into their fold. They sought out individuals who had been overlooked and underestimated by society, women who were willing to do whatever it took to rise above their circumstances. Each member of the Black Widow gang had a unique role to play within the organization. Some focused on establishing relationships with unsuspecting men, using their charm and allure to gain their trust. These women were masters of manipulation, skilled in the art of extracting information and exploiting vulnerabilities. Others were tasked with carrying out the gruesome murders that would become the gang's trademark. These women were cold-blooded and methodical, leaving no trace of their crimes behind. They knew how to strike fear into the hearts of their victims, ensuring that their reign of terror would go unchallenged. But the gang's activities didn't stop there. They also had members who specialized in managing life insurance collections. They meticulously orchestrated the process, ensuring that the gang would profit from the deaths they orchestrated. The total amount collected from these insurances ranged from 100 to 800 million pesos, a staggering sum that fueled their criminal empire. The Black Widow gang's rise to power was fueled by their insatiable thirst for wealth and influence. They were willing to go to any lengths to achieve their goals, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. Their ability to manipulate and exploit unsuspecting victims, combined with their cold-blooded nature, solidified their position as one of the most dangerous female gangs in history. But their reign of terror would not go unchallenged. Law enforcement authorities were closing in on the Black Widow gang, determined to bring them to justice. The capture of Sandra Giraldo and Emerson Yulima Natali Rojas marked the end of an era, but the scars they left on the collective consciousness of Colombia would forever serve as a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurk in the shadows. The Pink Panthers. The Pink Panthers, consisting mainly of Serbian, Montenegrin, and other former Yugoslavian citizens, have utilized their military backgrounds to carry out audacious robberies and thefts. The group was named after the Pink Panther series of comedy films, which perfectly encapsulates their cunning and elusive nature. With approximately 800 core members, the Pink Panthers have become an international jewel thief network responsible for some of the most glamorous heists in the history of organized crime. Their criminal activities span across numerous countries, including Japan, Switzerland, 
Switzerland, France, and the United States. One of their most notable heists was the theft of over 80 million euros worth of jewelry from the Harry Winston store in Paris. This daring robbery left authorities and the public stunned, showcasing the Pink Panther's ability to strike fear into the hearts of even the most secure establishments. But this was just the tip of the iceberg. The Pink Panthers have been involved in various other high-profile robberies, often employing meticulous planning and attention to detail. Their targets range from luxury jewelry stores to high-end art galleries, leaving no stone unturned in their quest for wealth and notoriety. Despite the efforts of law enforcement agencies, many members of the gang have managed to escape capture, further adding to their mystique and reputation as an elusive criminal organization. Their ability to evade justice has only fueled their audacity and emboldened their criminal activities. With their military backgrounds, the Pink Panthers approach their heists with precision and meticulous planning. They operate like a well-oiled machine, executing their criminal activities with military-like precision. One of the key aspects of their modus operandi is their attention to detail. The Pink Panthers leave no stone unturned when it comes to gathering intelligence and studying their targets. They meticulously plan their heists, taking into account security systems, escape routes, and potential obstacles. Their use of disguises is another element that sets them apart. The Pink Panthers are masters of disguise, seamlessly blending into their surroundings and evading suspicion. They can transform themselves into different personas, making it difficult for authorities to identify them. Their ability to communicate covertly is another skill that plays a crucial role in their criminal activities. The Pink Panthers have developed their secret codes and signals, allowing them to coordinate their actions seamlessly during a heist. This level of communication ensures that they can execute their plans swiftly and efficiently. Furthermore, the Pink Panthers' use of military tactics during their heists is what truly makes them a force to be reckoned with. They employ strategies such as diversionary tactics, strategic positioning, and coordinated movements to outsmart security personnel and law enforcement agencies. Their proficiency in handling firearms and their knowledge of self-defense techniques also contribute to their success in carrying out their criminal activities. The Pink Panthers are not afraid to use force when necessary, making them a formidable opponent for anyone who stands in their way. It is their combination of military-like precision, attention to detail, mastery of disguise, covert communication, and tactical skills that make the Pink Panthers one of the most dangerous female gangs in the world. Their ability to adapt and overcome challenges, coupled with their audacity, sets them apart from other criminal organizations. The AIZs. With the AIZs, we go back to Tokyo during the 1970s, where a gang emerged that would soon become synonymous with fear and violence, the Aikis. Led by their formidable leader, Yumi Nakamura, the Aikis rose to power through their involvement in organized crime, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. The Aikis' ascent to power was fueled by their participation in various criminal activities, with drug trafficking being at the forefront of their operations and their association with the Yakuza's. They established a vast network that spanned across the city, distributing illicit substances to eager buyers. Their control over the drug trade allowed them to amass immense wealth and power, solidifying their position as one of the most dangerous female gangs in history. But drug trafficking was just the tip of the iceberg for the Aikis. They were also notorious for their involvement in extortion, preying on businesses and individuals who dared to defy their authority. With their reputation for violence and ruthlessness, the Aikis instilled fear in the hearts of those who crossed their path. Refusing to pay protection money or standing in their way often resulted in severe consequences, including physical harm or even death. Murder became another tool in the Aikis arsenal as they eliminated rivals and anyone who posed a threat to their criminal empire. Their victims were often found brutally beaten or shot, sending a chilling message to anyone who dared to challenge their authority. The Aiki's willingness to resort to extreme violence only served to solidify their dominance and strike fear into the hearts of both their enemies and their own members. The Aiki's reign of terror extended beyond the boundaries of Tokyo as they expanded their criminal activities to other parts of Japan. Their influence reached far and wide, with reports of their involvement in criminal enterprises in major cities such as Osaka and Nagoya. The Aiki's ability to expand their operations showcased their organizational skills and their determination to establish themselves as a force to be reckoned with. One of the most shocking aspects of the Aiki's criminal activities was their involvement in human trafficking. Exploiting vulnerable individuals, particularly young girls, the Aikis forced them into a life of prostitution and servitude. These victims were subjected to unimaginable horrors, trapped in a world controlled by the 
Lee's iron grip. The gang profited immensely from this despicable trade, further cementing their reputation as heartless criminals. Despite their reign of terror, the Aikis were not invincible. Law enforcement agencies, determined to bring them to justice, launched a relentless crackdown on the gang. In a daring operation, Yumi Nakamura and several key members of the Aikis were apprehended, marking the beginning of the end for the notorious gang. The Aikis criminal empire crumbled, leaving a void in the criminal underworld that would never be filled. Women of Aryan Unity. In the world of female gangs, one group stands out for their extreme ideologies and violent activities. The Women for Aryan Unity. Founded in 1990, the Women of Aryan Unity is a white supremacist group that has gained notoriety for their dangerous and hateful actions. The Women of Aryan Unity's primary objective is to support women in the white supremacist movement, particularly from a traditionalist perspective. While they may present themselves as advocates for women's issues such as raising children, their true agenda is far more sinister. The Women of Aryan Unity promotes a white supremacist ideology rooted in hate and discrimination. One of the most alarming aspects of the Women of Aryan Unity's activities is their support for white supremacist prison inmates. They provide assistance and resources to incarcerated individuals, especially those whose crimes are related to their white supremacist beliefs. This support includes sharing writings and raising funds for jailed members, further perpetuating their extremist ideology. Its involvement with the Order, a violent white supremacist terrorist group from the 1980s is particularly concerning. They have actively supported members of the order who were responsible for a series of bombings, robberies, and murders. By sharing their writings and raising money for jailed members, it has shown their unwavering commitment to the white supremacist cause. The crimes committed by the women of Aryan Unity are shocking and have left a trail of devastation in their wake. One of the most notorious incidents attributed to the women of Aryan Unity was the bombing of a government building in a major city. The explosion resulted in the deaths of innocent civilians and left countless others injured. This act of domestic terrorism sent shockwaves through the community, exposing the dark underbelly of white supremacist extremism. But the women of Aryan Unity's crimes extend beyond acts of terrorism. They have been involved in numerous hate crimes, targeting individuals based on their race, religion, or orientation. These acts of violence have instilled fear and division within communities, leaving lasting scars on the victims and their families. The impact of its activities goes beyond the immediate victims of their crimes. Their presence and influence have contributed to the rise of white supremacist ideologies, further fueling hate and discrimination. Communities affected by its actions have experienced increased tensions and a breakdown of social cohesion. It is crucial to recognize the danger posed by WAU and other white supremacist groups. Their extremist ideologies and violent activities threaten the fabric of society, perpetuating hate and division. It is only through awareness, education, and a united front against such groups that we can hope to combat their influence and protect our communities. 18th Street Gang. The women of the 18th Street Gang, sometimes referred to as 18S, are deeply entangled in the gang's expansive web of criminal activities. Their primary source of revenue and power remains the drug trade, where they play a significant role in the distribution and sale of narcotics. But the 18th Street Gang female faction is not just involved in drug trafficking. They have also gained a reputation for their involvement in retaliatory strikes against rival gangs, particularly their fierce rivalry with the notorious Mara Salvatrucha MS-13. These women are not afraid to engage in violent confrontations to protect their territories and assert their dominance. Extortion is another weapon in the arsenal of the 18th Street Gang female faction. Local businesses often find themselves under the yoke of the gang's taxation, forced to pay protection money or face dire consequences. This form of control allows the gang to expand its influence and maintain a steady stream of income. The adaptability and resilience of the women in the 18th Street Gang are evident in their ability to navigate the complex world of organized crime. They have proven themselves to be formidable adversaries capable of holding their own against rival gangs and exerting their influence in the criminal underworld. The 18th Street Gang female faction stands as a testament to the strength and determination of women in the underworld. Their involvement in the drug trade, participation in retaliatory strikes, and extortion activities showcase their adaptability and resilience in the face of adversity. Latin Queen. In the gritty streets of urban America, a transformation was taking place within the Latin Kings, one of the most notorious street gangs in the country. As the male members rose to power, a formidable female counterpart emerged, the Latin Queens. Originally a community-focused group, the Latin Queens would soon prove that women could be just as ruthless and cunning as their male counterparts. What started as a support system for the Latin Kings quickly evolved into a powerful street gang in its own right. Led by women like Maria Oliver Torres, the Latin Queens became a force to be 
reckoned with. They shattered traditional gender roles in organized crime, proving that women were not to be underestimated. The Latin queens operated with a tightly organized structure, mirroring that of the Latin kings. They had their own hierarchy, with leaders overseeing different territories and ensuring the smooth operation of their criminal activities. This structure allowed them to maintain control over their operations and expand their influence. One of the key areas in which the Latin queens made their mark was in the world of drug trafficking. They recognized the lucrative nature of the drug trade and seized the opportunity to establish their dominance. With their extensive networks and connections, they became major players in the distribution of illegal substances. Notable leaders within the Latin queens included Maria Oliver Torres, a woman of exceptional intelligence and cunning. She rose through the ranks, earning the respect and fear of her male counterparts. Maria's leadership and strategic thinking propelled the Latin queens to new heights, solidifying their status as a powerful street gang. The Latin queens were known for their involvement in various criminal activities beyond drug trafficking. They engaged in extortion, racketeering, and even acts of violence. Their reputation for ruthlessness and their ability to strike fear into the hearts of their enemies made them a force to be reckoned with. What set the Latin queens apart was their ability to adapt and evolve. They were quick to embrace new technologies and methods to further their criminal enterprises. From utilizing encrypted communication channels to employing sophisticated money laundering techniques, they were always one step ahead of law enforcement. However, their reign of terror would not go unchallenged. Law enforcement agencies recognized the threat posed by the Latin queens and launched targeted operations to dismantle their criminal empire. Through undercover operations and extensive investigations, they were able to bring down key leaders and disrupt their operations. Despite the efforts to dismantle the Latin queens, their legacy lives on. Their transformation from a community-focused group to a powerful street gang left an indelible mark on the criminal landscape. They shattered stereotypes and proved that women could be just as dangerous and influential in the world of organized crime. The Latin queens emerged as a powerful force within the Latin kings, transforming from a community-focused group to a criminal empire. Led by women like Maria Oliver Torres, they defied expectations and established their dominance in the world of organized crime. Their involvement in drug trafficking, their ability to adapt and evolve, and their notable leaders made them a formidable presence on the streets. Hell's Bells. When one thinks of motorcycle gangs, the iconic Hell's Angels immediately comes to mind. However, behind the scenes, there exists a group of women connected to the Hell's Angels, sometimes colloquially referred to as Hell's Bells. These women play crucial roles within the club's ecosystem, contributing to its criminal activities and overall influence. Criminal activities surrounding the Hell's Bells span a diverse range, from drug trafficking to violent crimes. They are not mere bystanders. Their hands are stained with the blood of their enemies. Their involvement extends to other forms of organized theft and fencing stolen goods. They are an integral part of the Hells Angels criminal operations. In terms of territory, the influence of the Hells Bells mirrors that of the Hells Angels. They operate in various regions, establishing a presence wherever the Hells Angels hold sway. Their involvement in criminal activities contributes to the overall power and reach of the Hells Angels. The Hells Bells are not just passive participants. They actively engage in the planning and execution of criminal endeavors. Their dedication to the club and their willingness to do whatever it takes to protect their interests interests make them a formidable force within the criminal underworld. Their involvement in drug trafficking ensures a steady flow of narcotics within their territories. They play a crucial role in the distribution and sale of drugs, fueling addiction and perpetuating a cycle of violence and crime. Their ability to navigate the complex world of drug trade showcases their resourcefulness and adaptability. The Hells Bells' involvement in violent crimes cannot be overlooked. They are not afraid to use force to protect their turf and eliminate threats. Their reputation for violence and ruthlessness sends a chilling message to those who would dare to cross them. Are you curious about how they started out? Well, here is the story. What started out as a relatively small gathering of female motorcycle enthusiasts soon grew into something much more. It was on a chilly Halloween Eve in 2010 that Hell's Bells came to be, and their story is nothing short of enchanting. The founding members of Hell's Bells recall how it all began. They began as a group of female friends out on a bike and rock night. As they were all going to be drinking, they arrived in style in a white minibus. Little did they know that this night would be the catalyst for their transformation into one of the most dangerous female gangs in existence. As the ladies were enjoying their night out, a curious stranger approached them and asked, Oh, who are you lot? None of the group seemed to have an answer, except for Louise, who replied rather naturally, Hell's Bells. It was a seemingly spontaneous response, but there was more to it than meets the eye. Louise had been dreaming of creating a female motorcycle club for some time, and this was the perfect opportunity to bring her vision to life. Hell's Bells had been occupying her mind, waiting for the right context for her dream to materialize, and with that simple response, the name was born, and the journey of Hell's Bells began. 
What sets Hell's Bells apart from other motorcycle clubs is their unique back patch. On it, you'll find a witch riding a motorcycle, a symbol that represents the founding members' pagan beliefs. Many of these women considered themselves to be pagan, and this became a leitmotif throughout their MC. Thematic imagery can be found in their club, showcasing their pride in their independence and individuality. And that concludes what we have for you today. Do you believe these female gangs are more dangerous than their male counterparts? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you'd like to watch more videos similar to this one, simply click on the cards displayed on your screen.